Hi everyone, it's the first drawing request video of 2018. I'm taking the comments from the videos from last year, as always, and I'm picking out a random one. And this week's prompt is from Doodle Stuff, and he suggested redesigning any one of the existing food stalls in the game Theme Park. I'll be honest, I haven't played Theme Park. Or I don't think I have, but I have played a hell of a lot of Roller Coaster Tycoon, so I have an idea of what you're talking about. And the art movement to depict it in is Art Nouveau. Um, I'm <laughs> a little disappointed in a few ways that this didn't come up for a portrait or figure piece, but come to think of it, I did do that during Inktober in fall, so that's kind of recently, so I won't moan too much. At least it gives me an excuse to do a bit of line art and watercolours and inks, which are all my favourites. First I'm going to have a look at the theme park food stalls and yeah, they, they're pretty close to what I was thinking. Food stalls made of giant versions of the snack that they're selling. I think this is going to be a lot of fun to be honest, but I'm, I'm not sure which food I'm going to pick. I'm going to look at the style and think about the style a bit more before I choose one. Now I feel like Art Nouveau has to be one of the more immediately recognisable art forms that I've done in this series up to now. Even though it was produced in the end of the 19th, early 20th century, I think this style is still really popular today because even looking up examples I can see a lot of fan art in this style. <laughs> Which is funny because its popularity really didn't last much more than 20 years before it was replaced by Art Deco and Modernism. Art Nouveau is French for new art and even though the term we still use for the style is in French. The art form itself kind of grew across Europe under many different names at the time. It was a very widespread art form and that might be the reason why it spans so many mediums too. It's what's known as a total art style. You can get Art Nouveau paintings, architecture, sculpture, jewellery, textiles, just about any art form can come in Art Nouveau. But I would say it's recognisably a decorative art form. Art Nouveau kind of grew from the arts and crafts movement that came just before it in England, but it also had its own philosophy and outlook that bled into later art movements that replaced it in popularity. It was spurred on by architectural practices at the time. The most common lusted over architectural style was called Beau Arts. It's pretty much a bastardisation of classical Greek architecture and classical antiquity. Or maybe you see it as Renaissance architecture, I'm not sure how, what term to really classify it under. But it's like a newer approach to classical architecture. And most new big buildings at the time across Europe were done in that style. Even if you start studying architecture now, the first book that you'll be told you just have to read is Vitruvius's 10 Books of Architecture. I think most of you will have heard of Vitruvius because of the Vitruvian Man by Da Vinci. Well, he's called that because Vitruvius is the earliest known writer of architectural theory. He's what we base a lot of our understanding of early classical architecture on. He explains in that book the common proportions of people and of structures, and hence Da Vinci's drawing but he also explains the meaning and use of architectural orders. I don't really want to go horrifically into detail, but the point I'm trying to make is Vitruvius lived between 80 BC to 15 BC, and architecture since the Renaissance in the 14th century to the beginning of the 20th century had been taking his ideals and applying them to all large architectural projects in Europe and in America. But Art Nouveau came from a new strain of thought. Vitruvius had had what are known as the three virtues, which were firmitas, utilitas, venustas, which are roughly form, utility and beauty. All architecture should have had these three elements. And Art Nouveau just asked why? Why should it have all those three things in perfect proportion, like that was dictated in a way thousands of years ago? <laughs> they questioned the ideals held by these classics and postured, why should we keep it all the same? They broke a lot of rules and so they were known as the new art. It's very liberal and free and they seem to be intentionally trying to break up all the straight lines and forms of classical architecture by focusing on natural flowing curved lines instead 
A lot of inspiration for Art Nouveau comes from organic forms like the stems of a flower and plants, and this shaping is applied to whatever subject that they chose to depict, so I'm keeping that in mind while I design this stall. One thing I think might get a little bit lost though, and what I really want to discuss with you guys is ornamentation in art, and the difference between ornamentation in classical and Art Nouveau. I feel like at first glance it would be really easy to think that the classical architecture is closer to form following function than Art Nouveau was, but it's actually a lot more the opposite. Vitruvius may have had his Fermatas Utilitas Venustas, but a lot of classical architecture is excessively ornamental. You've got lots of plaster and stonework decorations, and there's very little focus really on how people interact with objects and buildings more on their appearance. There's also in classical antiquity a much more focus on what are the important arts, such as architecture and paintings, to what are seen as lower forms of art, which would be like furniture design or ironwork. Art Nouveau focused on quality of art across all forms. And on top of that, they thought the function of an object should dictate its form and not have loads of excess ornamentation. I think in general that concept, through modernism to now, has been taken to really a logical conclusion. Very little of modern architecture shows almost any decorative ornamentation, and I often feel like it's one of the reasons a fair amount of people dislike modern architecture. And I can understand that, I mean when I went to Lincoln Cathedral the other week, there's so much decoration and stonework just all over that cathedral, it's really beautiful. But when I'm looking at it, I always can't help but think about the families and the people who for loads of generations have been teaching and through apprenticeships all of these different skills to create these specific decorations and to fix them when they broke through those generations and also to replace them for just hundreds of years of history. I just love that craftsmanship. And to be honest, the fact that only a few stone workers are still fixing and reproducing all those sculptures on Lincoln Cathedral, I think it's just a bit sad. I remember back when I worked in architecture, I often got the comment that my work had a feeling like jewellery and I really liked steelwork and glass. I like seeing the function of how things work clearly, but I want it to be a visible and beautiful mechanism to see, and I feel like the clean lines and concrete and plaster work flatness of modern architecture that covers all these things up loses something really beautiful that Art Nouveau still at least held a little bit of love for. I guess it's like a depiction of function in a really pleasing way. I do like ornamentation and some decoration in my art, and I want to know what you guys feel towards it. Do you prefer this classical antiquity aesthetic of lots of ornamentation, or do you prefer modern, clean, open plan looking architecture where everything's covered and sleek? Where do you stand on how decorated you feel your art should be? It's one of those things I can imagine you all have a different view on, possibly even between art forms, so I'd really love to hear your thoughts below. As you can hopefully tell by now, the food I went with was an ice cream cone. <laughs> I feel like I could get more curves in there than maybe a different type of food. I mean, the burger would have worked, but I had an idea for the ice cream quite quickly, so I went with that. It's funny, but I've never really noticed how little perspective you see in Art Nouveau illustrations, so that kind of added another level of challenge to this painting too. In a lot of ways it kind of made me realise as well how close Cloisonne was to Art Nouveau as a style, this kind of looking at steelwork and physical art and seeing how it penetrated into paintings is quite interesting and it's funny how you notice little links like that when you do try different styles and you can almost see a natural evolution of where artists were going at the time. I really enjoyed this prompt, I think there's a lot of breadth to it as well, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys approach this prompt. I think it'd be a lot of fun too if maybe if you guys do have a go at this prompt of like putting all of the images together as if they were all on one theme park, I think that could be quite a lot of fun. Yeah, I think bringing them all onto one drawing and one image would be really interesting. I could maybe begin next week's video with that, that could be kind of fun. So as always, if you do follow this prompt, make 
make sure you do leave me a comment and share it with me so that I get to see it. And yeah, let's just have some fun. This is a really fun prompt, so I really hope you'll enjoy it. I know Doodle stuff's been hankering for this prompt for a while, so I really am looking forward to seeing, especially what he creates too. Hopefully I didn't steal ice cream from him. <laughs> and that's it for this week's video. As always, if you have an idea for a drawing request, I'd love to hear it and enter it into the weekly draw. And if you do follow the prompt, please make sure to send me a link so we can all enjoy it. I hope you're all doing well and I'll see you again next week.